Microsoft want to teach you how to write in a more inclusive way. Academics lock horns over whether the word eloquent is racist. And filmmakers want to produce a new non-binary version of Harry Potter. This is Free Speech Nation. Welcome to the show. So let's start off with a quick rundown of what the culture warriors have been up to this week. Microsoft has created a feature for Word, which helps users to write in a more inclusive manner. So if you write any words or phrases that imply bias or prejudice, it'll highlight them for you and suggest alternatives. For example, if you write mankind, it'll suggest humankind. If you write headmaster, it'll suggest principal. If you write postman pat, it will suggest Postal worker, Pat. If you write straight white male, it'll suggest bigot. OK, I made that last one up, but you get the point. I'm wondering if that annoying animated paperclip is going to make a reappearance. You remember that one? Although this time it'll be a paperclip that might be, I don't know, carrying a pride flag and changing your screensaver to an image of Benjamin Butterworth. Don't worry, by the way, I uh, did ask his permission before I said that. But the thing is, you can switch off this feature, but the thing is, you, you have to ask yourself, don't you, how sheep-like and compliant would you have to be to voluntarily submit yourself to re-education by a corporate leviathan like Microsoft? And in any case, why is a computer company behaving like some kind of Victorian matron teaching us all about etiquette? It's really weird. I mean, this is the company that was once criticised by Amnesty International for supplying technology to the Chinese government, which was used to ensnare political dissidents. But don't worry, they're going to teach you the correct way to speak. I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say, I don't really feel that faceless multi-billion dollar corporations, whose only reason for being is to rinse you for as much money as possible, should be taking the moral high ground on anything. Just get back to building computers and I'll decide which words I'm going to use, OK? And there's more linguistic battles this week, this time at Cambridge University, where Priyam Vada Gopal, who's a professor of post-colonial studies, has accused the historian David Abelafaya of using offensive language. Uh, this came after Abelafaya described historian David Oloshoga as eloquent, which Gopal claimed was offensive and implied that it was patronising to describe a black academic as such. Now, Abelafaya has accused Gopal of anti-Semitism. This is all getting very complicated. It's basically it's one academic criticising another academic for maligning another academic when he was actually praising that academic. And now the academic who's being criticised is criticising the criticiser. I mean, why can't these people just get off Twitter and teach their lessons? All of this has stirred a big debate in the media over whether the word eloquent can be racist. But isn't eloquent a compliment? Would it be racist to describe, say, a prominent black poet like uh, Benjamin Zephaniah as eloquent? Because that's exactly what Priyam Vada Gopal did in an article for The Guardian in 2019. Maybe it's OK when she does it. Gopal is something of a Twitter warrior, so perhaps we shouldn't take what she says too seriously. After all, she became well known after claiming that the porters at her Cambridge college were racist because they were referring to her as Madam rather than Dr Gopal. Isn't it annoying when the help won't address you properly? I had to sack my last underbutler because he wouldn't refer to me as my liege. On to another story now. This is a group of film producers in America who are planning to make a new movie version of Harry Potter in which all the characters are played by transgender and non-binary people. So the role of Harry Potter's father apparently is only open to an actor who is, quote, Asian, black, African descent, ethnically ambiguous, multiracial, indigenous peoples, Latino, Hispanic, Middle Eastern, South Asian, Indian, Southeast Asian or Pacific Islander. They could have saved a lot of time by just writing not white. And Harry's mother must be played by a gender nonconforming, non-binary trans female. I mean... This film is not going to happen, is it? Let, let's be completely honest. You can't just remake someone else's film without their permission. And in any case, what is it with all these filmmakers reworking old characters or making them woke? We've had a female Doctor Who, a black bisexual Batwoman, a gay Captain America. Why not just create new characters? Well, it's simple, isn't it? It's because identitarian activists believe that the wrongs of the past need to be corrected and that they are so morally superior that they should just trample all over the artistic and literary achievements of far more talented writers. And it's just so banal. You know, if you watch a film or read a book and all you can do is assess its worth on the basis of group identity and how many minorities are represented, you are missing so much of what is wonderful about the arts. 
Why not just invent a female action hero or a black superhero or a disabled sleuth? It has been done many, many times before and no one's ever had any problems with it. What people object to is this self-righteous need to rewrite and correct other people's creations. So I would say to the makers of this woke Harry Potter, just write a new story with new characters. You don't need to cling on to the coattails of those writers you clearly despise. Don't give J.K. Rowling the satisfaction of thinking you need her imaginative powers to be successful. Just do the hard work yourself. Populate a whole new world with non-binary wizards, gender-fluid dragons and pansexual hobgoblins. I'm sure it'll be really popular.